Hello and welcome back to Sigma Mechanics. I'm Edmund. In this video, I'm going to explain and demonstrate four methods to solve a commonly asked question uh, that most PHP 20 owners eventually run into, uh, which is, uh, what do you do if you forget to put the takedown lever back into the grip module when reassembling the gun? Now, for anyone who's stuck on this problem currently and just wish to forgo the technical explanation on why the problem occurs, I'm going to timestamp uh, the solutions into the comment section and you can skip uh, all the talking and go straight to the resolutions. For those of you that came here hoping to learn and understand the why behind the issue, I will be demonstrating certain mechanics and uh, part interactions um, internal to the gun and I'll uh, point out some key parts and their functions and then I'll lock the FCU into the slide and I'll provide um, close-ups that hopefully will um, clear things up and get you that much more comfortable with your P320. So before I start, uh, just a quick disclaimer, I am not a gunsmith or a certified armor. And if anyone has questions or uh, have problems that go beyond the scope uh, and intention of this video, uh, I urge you to speak to a professional that could deal with the problem directly for you. Now, let's get into this. I think it's uh, critical for the sake of clarity uh, to understand how the trigger bar interacts with the sear. And, um, and to that end, I, I'm going to explain it to you here now, but if you've watched my previous video on why the slide moves when you're uh, dry firing, it's likely that you already uh, know or understand this next part. So in normal operation, uh, a user will pull the trigger, which in turn pulls the trigger bar forward, which in turn engages the sear, and the sear gets pulled forward at its base, right? Right, and because the sear is on a uh, pin that's uh, pivoting, that forward motion causes the sear to move uh, downward, uh, allowing the striker to go free and the gun to fire. Now, when the gun fires and uh, your slide moves back, um, this that motion of moving the slide back will push down and engage this right here, the trigger bar disconnect. Now this pushes the trigger bar out of the way of the uh, the, the the sear, and uh, and the sear no longer will interact with it. So, I mean, if this is normal operation, pulling the trigger and the trigger bar moves the sear forward. If I engage the disconnect, there is no longer any interaction between the two. Uh, now instead, the um, the trigger bar will sit below the sear and. Uh, it basically gets ready to reset. So once a user releases the trigger, um, then everything goes back into place. Now, herein lies the problem with forgetting to put the takedown lever into the grip module. Now we've looked at how the FCU functions and how the trigger bar disconnect works. Now let's tie this all together with a quick look at why the slide can't simply be pulled back out the way it went in um, after the FCU and slide get coupled together. Just a quick note, I removed the, uh, the barrel, the guide rod, and uh, the um, extractor. Uh, also, I have removed the spring from the uh, striker just to make it uh, easier to, to, to go over this demonstration visually. So <clears throat> the reason why uh, you can't just pull it back out the way it went in is because the sear is, uh, is actually locked together with the striker. And so if I were to remove these, the rear plate and pull the FCU towards the rear here, I'm going to zoom you in, and you can actually see the sear, the ledge of that sear, and a hook from the striker that is uh, gripping onto that ledge. So just putting this all back together here. <clears throat> now, uh, we can see at the bottom of the slide, there's the, the striker again, and there's a, uh, a, a notch cut out. I'm pointing up that cut out there uh, because it relates to one of the removal methods later on. Uh, that notch, when the slide is in battery, houses the trigger bar disconnect, uh, meaning that when uh, everything's in battery, um, 
and the, the slide reaches this point, the cutout point, uh, the disconnect springs up uh, into a disconnected position. So uh, we can actually see and hear this process uh, when I move the FCU in and out of battery. So let's just take a look right up here. So now we have this data and we know how to resolve the problem. So let's go over the methods to resolve it systematically uh, in, in two ways. So first would be if you have tools and second would be if you don't have tools. For example, you're at the range and you just found yourself uh, with this problem. So most likely your firearm uh, looks like this. So there's no takedown lever in it. Um, there will be minimal forward and backward movement. Now, the, some instances you would be able to uh, lock back the slide, um, but regardless of whether you can or can't, um, that's okay because if you pull up the grip, will actually pull apart from the slide, and the uh, slide will come up uh, with the FCU locked in it just like this, and <clears throat> we can actually see. I'll zoom you in here we can see that the trigger bar disconnect is engaged and will not interact with the sear. So let's go over the various method methods to resolve this problem. Okay, so the first method and arguably the easiest method to, uh, to do if you have tools uh, will be the following. So I'm using this uh, pick over here and it has a flat end on the other side. So if we look underneath, and we focus in on the SCU here, you can see again this uh, trigger bar is no, no longer interacting with the sear. And we need to release that, uh, that sear. So if you stick the tool in between the two components, and I just used the uh, FCU housing as leverage here, uh, but if you pull that sear forward, you eventually get that click. And that click is the uh, the striker releasing itself from the sear. Now, with a little bit of backwards pressure, in my instance, I did it with my thumb over here, you can actually just pull back and remove the FCU. The second tool method would be to access the rear portion of the slide and what we're trying to do is get a tool inside and in between the slide and the fcu and we're trying to push down on the striker because the striker and the sear right now are uh, gripping one another uh, from that little ledge so if you stick your tool in and you just give a little bit of a downward push you'll hear that click and now uh, using, I uh, usually just use my thumb and I push towards the rear of the slide, you can actually remove the FCU. The third tool method, uh, I recommend you use a uh, plastic blunt object as opposed to uh, a metallic one just to uh, prevent damage to the finish of the firearm. So uh, the third method <clears throat> would actually be trying to lock the slide back. And uh, now in some instances, uh, that is possible just uh, by the by luck. That's just the way your, your slide uh, went in when you forgot to put the takedown in. However, other people might not be able to do so. And as you can see here, I can't push the FCU any further uh, forward. I can, uh, with a little pressure, push it back, but that's the limitation that I have. Now, to change that, what I do is I grip the uh, guide rod and I'm going to pull it down towards the front of the uh, the slide while applying forward pressure to the back of the FCU and by doing so you get to a point where you can actually slide and lock the FCU. Now when you do this you can now take your tool and you're going to remove the rear plate. So simply just do that you're going to take out the striker and now just like you would normally rack your slide uh, obviously keep some pressure uh, but you can release and just with your finger push back on the fcu and the fcu will come out the fourth method will require no tools and uh, 
it's actually uh, the reason I explained a little bit more in depth the uh, features and components of the Etsy UN slide is so that you could understand this next part. So uh, this one's uh, probably the easiest one to do uh, in a no tool um, format. And what we're trying to do is just get the FCU to uh, go into battery with the slide. So if we, well, let's take a look quickly here and we can see that the trigger bar um, doesn't interact with the sear at this point. But if we apply with the thumb here, uh, pressure towards the rear of the slide, uh, we will actually drop, see that uh, trigger bar? It's dropping behind the sear. Now, uh, with your finger, you can actually just pull the trigger, which will disengage the striker from the sear. And from this point forward, you can, with your thumb, just pull out the FCU. So the fifth method uh, is to reinsert the takedown lever. Now, I find that this here is the worst method uh, of all of them, and I've only be a been able to, to do this a handful of times effectively. Um, first, I'm going to show you theoretically why it works. Now, <clears throat> as uh, you already know from watching the earlier video, uh, what we are trying to achieve is getting the uh, the hook of the striker released from the ledge here on the sear. Now, <clears throat> by reinserting, if you can reinsert the um, the takedown lever and turn it, you're effectively just moving down the sear, right? So let me let me do that from the other side here. So I'm going to remove. So the uh, sear is in the upward position, and now I'm going to insert, and I'm going to turn. And you can see the sear has moved down. Now, um, I'm putting this uh, here, because it's a plausible um, solution to the problem. The problem I find with this method is when, when the FCU is stuck inside, uh, uh, you have the guide rod and the guide rod spring in the way. And even if you were to insert the uh, takedown lever into the hole and turn it, which I have done here, it only incrementally drops down the, um, the sear. And therefore, you might maybe be able to release the FCU from the slide. Uh, but again, it, it's possible. It's just um, not really effective uh, for most people. So I wouldn't recommend it. However, if you're in a pinch and nothing else works, maybe uh, this method will uh, allow you to release the FCU. All right, so I want to thank everyone for uh, sticking with me uh, while I learn how to uh, use YouTube. And um, I have come to know that uh, I need to uh, get more subscribers because in doing so, apparently I can unlock more features uh, like the ability to uh, post pictures. Uh, and I think that would be very useful to give to, uh, to let me post high resolution pictures of parts and components that might fill in any visual uh, gaps that viewers might uh, might need. Uh, for example, like a side-to-side -side comparison of the modified versus unmodified sear from my very first video. Anyways, um, I look forward to making more videos and uh, please feel free to comment with any takeaways you have uh, or ideas you might have for future videos. Anything you believe that would be useful to other um, P320 owners in this case, we'll, we'll get into uh, other guns down the road. Um, but uh, I hope you learned something useful. Um, I, I make these videos because I want to, to give something back to the SIG community. Uh, I've, I've pretty much uh, been trained uh, through this community and, and learned everything I did through uh, this community and the firearms community in general. So uh, I'm hoping that by, uh, by understanding your firearm better, uh, you'll in turn uh, be able to get more enjoyment out of it. So uh, again, uh, thank you very much and we'll uh, see you soon.